Welcome back to MIC's video series, Trading Basics. This is episode three. I'm your host, Joe Kelly. I'm one of the moderators of the room. We got another good one for you, but before we get into it, we got to take a moment and review this education only disclaimer. Kids, we're getting straight down to business. No lollygagging. We're going to talk about the pattern day trader rule. What is it and how to deal with its challenges? Any customer who executes four or more day trades within five business days gets restricted from closing any more positions for 90 days. That qualifies you as a pattern day trader. That means that you get three day trades per rolling five days, five business days without restriction. So what is a day trade? A day trade is when you open a position and close a piece or all of the position within the same trading day. That means during any of the three trading sessions, whether that's pre-market, regular session, or after hours. Now, what should you be aware of? You need to be aware of what's called first in, first out, or FIFO. Not FIDO, FIFO. This method of assessing and accounting for what counts as a day trade applies to when you have scaled into a position with certain brokers. That seems to be a fascination always with traders is how do I scale or average into a position? But I'm under PDT. Can I do it or can I not? Truth is you can. So let's say you buy 500 shares and then you buy another 500 shares and then you sell all of it, okay? Guess what? That counts as two day trades since there were two separate entries before closing the position. Now let's flip that example and say that you bought a thousand shares and you sold in pieces. So you bought a thousand shares in one trade, but you sold 500 and sold 500. That means that it's one day trade, okay? Because first in, first out. That means that when you buy 500 shares, that's first in. When you buy another 500 shares, that's considered a second first in. And then when you sell all of those, that round trip closes two opening positions. So if you close a piece or all of them, you're going to count as two day trades. So how do you trade? within these PDT guidelines. For example, if you want to do day trading, well, you have to be very, very selective and only trade the 19, 20, and 21 blackjack hands. In reality, this should be done regardless of PDT, but PDT makes it so much more difficult to trade the lower odds setups and still have the opportunity to trade the better odds setups when they come. If you don't get your execution, you don't trade. Simple as that. If you don't know what your ideal entry is, you should avoid and record the outcome. This helps you gain future confidence to know when to pull the trigger, to be ready to pull the trigger when you're standing on the front lines looking the enemy in the eyes. So what is another opportunity to trade within these guidelines for PDT? One would be to swing trade. Swing trading is great for part-time traders and the reason is is because the hold periods are generally days to weeks. So you most of the time will not have opening and closing positions in one trading day. Or you can just open multiple brokerage accounts. Each account will get three day trades and the accounts don't have to be with the same broker. So you can split up 
one account here, one account here, one account here. And if you have three accounts, you're going to have nine day trades out of the total. How to avoid PDT. This is what everybody always asks. How do I get around PDT? What do, what do I do? Well, uh, the simple answer that everyone hates to hear is uh, you got to maintain $25,000 worth of account equity at all times. Uh, that's how you can avoid PDT with any U.S. based broker. Or you can open a cash account. These are not restricted under the pattern day trader. However, they do have their own restrictions. Some things such as free riding and so on. I recommend you look into what those restrictions are. That means that what, what I mean by unable to sell short is selling short requires a margin account. So margin accounts are restricted by PDT. Cash accounts are not, but you can't sell short, which, you know, if you're just long biased, that's fine. But you must wait for funds from previous trades to settle before you're able to trade with them again. What that means is the settlement of funds involves a regulation known as T plus 2. T is the trade date, the date the trade happened. T plus 2 is two business days after the trade date. This is how long it takes funds to settle before you can trade with them again. If you're trading very small size relative to your account size, you generally won't run into this problem unless you're trading a lot. Or you can go to an offshore broker, which again, MIC does not recommend doing this simply because there is a high risk involved due to very little U.S. regulation. This also means that there is no FDIC or SIPC should said broker go into bankruptcy or just decide to close the doors and hit the Bahamas. You're out of luck. Now let's break down into an actual trade example of how you could scale into a position while under pattern day trader. Let's pick a stop and then pick a profit target. This is what you should do when you're making a trade plan immediately. You need to have a stop and a target and make sure that there is enough range. That means meet. Take the easy money. Don't try to nail the top and the bottom. You don't need to be perfect. So this trade example here is based off of the chart on the right side. Let's say that we want to buy the dip into the five minute 50 period exponential moving average with a risk at 5% below the 50 EMA and a profit target at 260. I'll break that down what I mean exactly. So that means your stop is going to be equal to the 5 minute 50 period moving average which is 218 and you got to times that by 95% because we want 5% below 218. It's the same thing as if you wanted to calculate SSR or short sell restriction for a ticker on specific days. Uh, you look at the previous close and you times it by 90% or 0.9. That gets you the 10% below, which is then going to be SSR trigger. So our stop is going to be 207 in this trade. Our target, again, is 260. We're going to take 500 shares. That's what we want to trade with because we want to risk a max of 50 bucks. So on the chart now, you can see the red line is your stop and the green line is your profit target. If the red line gets breached, you stop out for a loss. If the green line is breached or somewhere near it, take your money and run. This means that your earliest entry can be equal to your max dollar risk divided by the shares. Okay. So that means 50 bucks divided by 500 is equal to 10 cents, okay? If your stop is 207, the maximum you can risk is 10 cents a share. 
if you only want to lose $50. That means that when you take 207 plus 10 cents, your earliest entry is 217. Anywhere between 207 and 217, you can enter the trade and you will have a decent risk reward return based on the amount of money you want to risk. Now, right there is where you could take your entry. It's touched the 50 period moving average and now you can enter in your trade and you're going to be right at your 217 to 15 whatever it may be whatever your average becomes now how do you enter into this well there's many different ways okay you could do one order of 500 two orders of 250 five orders of 100 or even 10 orders of 50 shares but as long as it is between 207 to 217, I can spread out those orders all that I want, okay? But if you're not with an MIC preferred broker, be aware of FIFO with how many times you decide to scale into this position. So once you get a portion or full position size, then sell in pieces as the price moves in your favor. You always got to remember though, again, is if you sell a piece or all after buying any amount of shares, that will count as a day trade, but you have to be aware of how many times you've scaled in. Make sure to contact your broker before you try to scale under PDT. You got to know exactly how they assess or account for day trades. You may accidentally end up restricting your account due to PDT violations, and you may not be able to fully exit your position or at all. Or you could always just switch over to one of MIC's preferred brokers, which you know I'm gonna go over in the next slide. So let's jump to it. So these brokers, again, if you are above 25,000, you don't need to worry about day trades, as long as you stay above 25,000. Who enforces FIFO? Off the top of my head and a bit of research, uh, E-Trade does, TD Ameritrade does, and there are several more out there. But again, if you're going to open a brokerage account with one of those brokers, ask them how they assess for day trades first, just to make sure you know exactly what you're going into. Who doesn't? Venom by Cobra Trading, which is MIC's preferred broker for small accounts. Jump into MIC's chat, message at Cobra Trading. That's Chad. He's a great dude. He'll help you get an introduction into Venom and ask and answer any questions that you may need. They clear through interactive brokers, so you're going to be getting interactive brokers, uh, short sell availabilities, uh, along with how they assess for day trades. Interactive brokers does not assess or account for day trades in a FIFO method. You can scale into a position all day long and then sell a piece or all of it, or close, whatever you want to do, whether you're short or you're long. And it will only count as one day trade, as long as you don't buy, sell, buy, sell. If you do that, that's two. But if you just buy, sell, and then buy, and then hold overnight, you're only going to use one because there was only one closing trade in there. Or... You could go with Cobra or Speed Trader, which are both MIC preferred brokers, but they do have a higher minimum. They have several different clearing firm options. Or again, you could go with an offshore broker, which MIC does not recommend. That's it for this week's episode of Trading Basics, folks. I've been your host, Joe Kelly. We'll have another good one for you next week. But until then, if you have any questions, feel free to send me a PM in MIC's chat or any other mentors or moderators in there. Have a good one and enjoy your New Year's.